Okay, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Thank you, Fran. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm very, very happy that uh, today, for one more year, hosting, uh, first of all, a very good friend, uh, and very importantly, a great mind and a great professional. Uh, in the field of architecture, but in the field of architecture understood like in different scales and almost including also different disciplines. So Winnie Mas uh, is, as you all know, the founder and director of the MBRDV practice based in Rotterdam, but all over the globe. He's also the director of the Y factory at the uh, uh, TU Delft um, at the School of Architecture, where there, through academic uh, uh, actions, he's also like trying to speculate uh, and envision and create the futures uh, of our cities and our buildings. So, in a way, he's able to always combine um, the practice uh, with the what comes next. He's actually that's his favorite phrase. No, what comes next. Um, and uh, he has been spending with us last year and this year uh, as, a, as a faculty professor of the Master in City and Technology. He has been spending some time with our students envisioning what is next and what comes next when technology is um, um, uh, integrating, not dominating, but integrated into the environment. So I'm very happy that uh, we have him here today. Last year he did a talk about um, more urban scale. This year he will be combining um, brand new York, new, not, not New York, New York, <laughs> brand new work, but um, as I said, uh, the capacity of an architect that is building in a real scale, but at the same time he's able to question through his architecture uh, uh, what is the programmatic distribution, what is the landscape, landscape capable of, how we can rethink and activate the public space. I love this staircase uh, uh, that you have been working on uh, for uh, as an ephemeral installation. So many, many topics from different scales and disciplines. Winnie, thank you very much for being once here again with us for the lecture, but also for contributing into our academic uh, faculty board. Thank you. Please help me welcome him. Thanks, Aretti. It is, um, it's uh, always um, like a challenge if you speak like once a year at an institution, because it makes it, um, you have to innovate yourself in that way. Uh, so I think it's, um, it's a very good way of dealing with that. I did that maybe 10 years ago, I did it always at the AA in London, but somehow the AA has died and Yuck has taken over. So that is a, a, that relationship, so that makes it, um, uh, that, that's good. And then, uh, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. So what I will do today, indeed not talking about, uh, directly about urbanism, but actually about what our workshop uh, these days is about. Uh, it's about the speculation of the, the future of, um, uh, on uh, technology. It's called the Robotic City, uh, that project. And I try to position, I, I try to make tonight a certain kind of sequence that allows uh, me and us uh, to, uh, to stage that project that uh, uh, your students uh, are making. And I'm looking eagerly forward to the beautiful story in two weeks' time uh, for that, to exhibit that later, and to create, therefore, again, a kind of platform for a next step. That's the cycle that you are um, giving me. The robotic city is, of course, uh, between a dream and between a nightmare. Uh, with, uh, there are many science fictions. Uh, uh, are based on the nightmare uh, component, but somehow we try to bring it from the nightmare into a dream again, and that is um, so to live with uh, that. That's not, and that already that sentence has been uh, explored by your students uh, the last weeks uh, more than ever. So this was the invention of the week. So what I will do, I have an introduction. I take you to the technological components that are there. I bring you to the to the next step that's nano basically and I end with a, with a kind of biological conclusion uh, as such. And I, I use that phrase that is indeed my, my, my life phrase again and some of you are I, I guess bored about that 
But on the other hand, it, it remains a fantastic motor that is also has taken, been taken over by other, other people to, to think in continuity, to think in evolution uh, endlessly. So let's start. And I want to take you to a chapter which um, we just explored say, last week. Eh? Maybe some of you were there, others have been witnessing what happened in Seoul, a city that be from gray becomes green, eh? that on one hand from say car becomes pedestrian, and say from emptiness it becomes uh, a political uh, democracy as such. And somehow also it becomes, say from say a stadium, it turns into this kind of blobs of the last century. So what is next in, um, in uh, that's Solu, that's our botanic bridge. And I will ask afterwards to explain you why I am uh, showing this. This was a situation, say two and a half years ago, uh, where this uh, say cheap bridge was spanning over the city next to the central station. And we were asked to make a design uh, to use that bridge, not to kill it, and with that budget, I could have done definitely other things. I am aware about that. But to invest in a kind of action so that somehow uh, in an impossible area where there's too many cars, too many trains, and nothing, say, almost human in that way, um, uh, where you could do, could infiltrate almost like a European action as such. So most of the design is done in, uh, uh, in a kind of series of projects because it was a comp... Yeah, I mean, it's not so big. It is like uh, one and a half kilometer long. It's 10 meters wide, so it's simply 15,000 square meters. It's like a normal building as such, one could say. But it has uh, different components because of its appearance there. I mean, Barcelona has the, the knowledge for that, for doing it. But this was a special case because, in a way, we have to make a project to strengthen uh, the viaduct. More or less 50% uh, goes into this kind of uh, action. The 70s are too weak to do that. We had a sufficient uh, project and money to spend on the flooring which is stabilizing the whole project, but also is a base for the trees on top of it. So if you would say, I'm copying the High Line in New York, it's impossible to do on this viaduct because I cannot put so much sand on it. The weight is already spent to this uh, elements. So I have to concentrate it in simply in dots as such, and to, to, be, to be very almost like a surgeon, that every species that I want to do, to give that exactly the, the enough amount of earth to, to make that possible which is beautiful, because that leads to a project of three pots, basically. That it looks like this, but where every safe species that we invent gets the proper size, the proper neighbor as such, but also it becomes like a series of, say, monuments when you walk around. It's like a gallery of art that has pedestals. Here, the, in this case, the trees are the kings and are to be cel or the stars to be celebrated from, say, from one end to the other, and you see this kind of, say, elements emerging. And that has been leading to the other project, but that is like how to not do what uh, uh, Liz and what uh, Pete Adolf have been making, uh, because I respect that work a lot, and that's why I don't want to copy it. But is that, that we could do like a project where all the species, basically of Korea and Seoul, would be gathered. And because I couldn't choose uh, uh, personal, uh, say, obsession, but on the other hand, I think it's also a, a tool to, uh, to get them all on the viaduct and to order them then in an alphabetic, Korean alphabet, uh, order from, say, from east to west. And that is then accompanied with a kind of text project to, uh, on the edge of, of, of over-educational to illustrate what we are passing by. But it also leads to a sequence of gardens that are, by coincidence, are nice. That there is not this kind of pre uh, uh, concept of infinity, because eh? landscape architecture is always about infinity. Eh? Le Notre is about the infinite access. Um, Capability Brown in, uh, is about the kind of circle to drive with a carriage, also in infinite. In another kind of way, the catalog is also kind of infinite matter as such. This is accompanied with an inhabitation project, the utilities, where, say, Toilets can also be combined with plants, or kiosks can make, or tea cafes can deal with jasmine, or flower shops can deal uh, with certain species as such, and that leads also, also to a village, not a village of plants, but both a village of usage. And then, which is also quite different, it's a, it's a project not only for the day, it's also for the night. You are used to that. Many parks in London are not open in the evening, which is stupid as such. In the Netherlands, more and more uh, either. But how to make a park that you love in the night, especially, is that the task, I think, in Asian uh, areas uh, to do that. 
Next project, the access, is dealing, of course, how to get up to that, uh, uh, to that uh, zone. And that leads also to satellites on the foot of the bridge where we can uh, start to develop, uh, say, also the surrounding. So here immediately also uh, what next is implied, that say this, it leads also to connections. To, uh, so when this is what we start, we could already sell three, four bridges now to, to Samsung, to a hotel, to Lotte, uh, in that way, so that this becomes gradually, and now uh, it's actually more are coming, to this kind of octopus that is going over this, uh, over this city and leads to next satellites and next connection. And that is, I think, the project's impression, the, the, the suggestion. Impressions were, of course, like this, and we need to grow to that. Huh? So already it looks a lot like these images, as I, I will show you. But of course, it takes a little bit of time to make this nursery that we are planting there to make them, uh, yeah, to grow from kids to uh, to adults is what it does. The night project has been developed in that way that we make a kind of base of blue, right? it's a kind of uh, Eve Klein uh, uh, blue, so that it compensates the, the, the Luna Park of light that surrounds it. This blueness, we can, which is kind of dreamy aspect, you have spots remain the stars in this, in this universe. So what is next? Yes, you make you construct it quite rapidly over a year. We did it with a, quite a lot of people, more than 400 people have been working on it. And then we tested everything on the pavements of uh, Seoul and discussed it with the mayor, discussed it with the journalist, tested the plans, tested the apps and the information system, tested the lights and that we changed because of that. Experimentation project, uh, not only here at YAC, but also in, in education in general, but also like in this kind of project. And then you can invite people, journalists, and then I take you quickly with a tour through it. You go through the cities, you see the posters, you see these views that is kind of a kilometer stretch is hoovering over it. And then you go down, touch earth, and find this walk through all these different species with the different kiosks and different shops that are over there. That leads to this zone of maple trees. In this case, goes further into the next zone underneath, we can discover the first galleries over there. We go to the Magnolia Plaza, where bridges go to the hotels at that moment that become in that way the first time that you have at the third floor activation as such. And you continue with hanging plants over it with the Magnolia the tribunes and dance platforms. Go further to the, the gardens of the Nymphea. Here you, have, you see some access to the metro. And what the, the underside of the bridge is basically explaining how the water system works where the buffers are, how the cleaning is working. Uh, uh, and uh, so we keep it naked and then we continue further. And then gradually you have the feeling that indeed there is a kind of, not only a walk floating over the city, but also a destination is floating over the city with uh, that people want to hang out, want to take a bath, want to jump uh, in between, want to, to sit, want to, to, to make pictures as such, want to shade, want to walk further, want to get information, want to jump on this kind of mirrors. Uh, to the to the lower part, see uh, species that they love, hang out with these fishes, go to this picture point as such, go on top and have this overview, and then again, of course, pictures everywhere to make it is. I think is a task of us that we make buildings and designs that have thousands of picture points, not only a one-liner, but that you can find out that somehow on the internet that there are more of these things happening. Here, the center part, the Ginkgo uh, gallery with Yin Yang uh, configuration of male and female. All the, the, the climatic uh, machines that we need to, to nozzle the air and to shade uh, the environment in a such. We come to the Rose uh, Theater uh, as such, where the roses are, have also this kind of attractions. Go further to the conifer zones, to the taxis uh, gardens, etc., to the azaleas. Walk around again to the Rose Cafe that is kind of uh, hoovering over the city where we can stand on top of it. And then the, the viaduct bifurcates or trifurcates in different, say, gardens before you are going into the city again. With, uh, and here, say, the pavilion somehow end in one of the walks. And then I'm downstairs again after this floating action. And what it, this happened at that moment, then this is only what we, what we did. But what was next, say, and after this walk, and uh, uh, that somehow in the evening, this starts to happen. And when you look down, then okay, it's going further, quite good. Half an hour later, then there is a kind of problem. And that, uh, uh, so there's, I didn't expect that either. To, with the military, with firemen, I had to make rapidly kind of extra, say, bridges and stairs 
to, uh, to have enough escape length in it. The good thing about this, that there is now more money to make more bridges. So that is, uh, so how do you do that eh? when you want to have a building that's success? Make it too tight. So that's what it could be. So it was quite uh, cute. I didn't see where are the plants, basically, in this kind of overwhelming kermes that are there. The mayor was uh, loving it. The stairs were a, a nightmare at that moment, but it was wonderful and such. And, but, and it went on. And when you open it, and you, the, I never had a party with 250,000 people uh, at that moment. And, it, and you see them standing here. I only can see, see myself and, and the people that are there in this kind of screens that are, uh, are happening to see something. And then gradually it fades out. It becomes, I'm in the middle of, it's two o'clock, three o'clock in the night. I have my European jet lag and I, I go to this, uh, uh, to this zone and then it's full of couples that are kissing. And I think that is uh, what we should make, no? And that, uh, because it feels with this kind of blue light and the spotlight, super cozy and comfortable. It's like the right amount of light. It's not, say, we didn't make this light would do and overlit these areas in that way and would kill every love that you would have. But in this case, it was doable because of the names of the plants and because of these mini spotlights that are there. With this, uh, that. So thank you, the light designer, Rogier van der Heide, who made this in that way possible with us to do it. And then I was indeed also a bit surprised to see the reactions over the planet, even in my own country, um, um, with lessons learned. And me, you know, the Guardian, they're in, uh, in evaluation, very good in that way, and that it turned into... Uh, Urbanism became also a piece for the design, for the zine. The zine never publishes more than things that are, say, 500 meters big, 300 meters big, and suddenly they become bigger. That's what was my, my dream. And what is my next? Yes. Now, after 10 days, uh, with 1.4 million people on that viaduct, so imagine that if that would continue, say, somehow, that would mean basically like 45 million people in one year. That's three times Euro Disney then I'm, uh, I don't know what to say about that in that way. I'm not saying that we should plead for that in that way. But again, it's about density, yes, I'm aware. I was already uh, triggered by it when I was a kid and, uh, and, and somehow I'm confronted with that, with this operation. So what is next? Yes, we go on. Uh, that is also the good part. Next bridges uh, that connect then this thing with different environments that look a little bit shitty, but actually beautiful because it's Asia in an other kind of way. So we analyzed all the problems, or say suggestions over there. We ordered them in accessibility, in uh, say density and possibilities, and in greenness as such. And we developed a toolbox where we could apply these kind of three agendas in, in a kind of say small way. So from, and then we see of course where already we should go to. Uh, these public destinations are there. These green destinations are here. And the denser areas are already also on this map. That leads to a possible say network as such. So this could grow, this bridge now, into these connections, and that leads to a series of intervention areas. Let me take you to four of, there are four, I only take one for the moment, in Jimning Dong, this looks initially as a plan like that, so very Asian, but has now been appropriated or make it possible to, to do it like this, that we gradually can turn it into something like that, with interventions on accessibility, from small to, uh, to bigger ones, like you can see here, with interventions on greenness, yes, with the most beautiful green street that I would like to make, with all the pots thinkable in a three-dimensional matter that surround me when I go through, to this kind of new, the competition of the, of the convention center soon, with this kind of addressing in it uh, as such, and that leads to this kind of, say, imagination, but also where to put next housing as such, or where to put next school, and how to, do, to, to bend over each other is part of this operation to lead to that. From this image through that is what is happening. And the same in the neighboring area. That way, oh, I'm not going to repeat that, how that will start to look in that way, in that dream. And in the end, this is then the overview that the coming two, three years are happening. From this, now these interventions are painted on this, in these different elements. So this, and then at a certain moment, I'm like that. Then I'm paint something with green and with density, a certain kind of painting over this gray city of, of, uh, of, uh, of Seoul. So what is next in this case after doing that? I'm making this, looking at the sequence as such. Uh, so let me close it. Uh, don't worry, don't be scared. Um, there it is. Because uh, wasn't I talking about robotics in, in, the, in that way? Oh, this is horrible beamer. Wait a minute. Uh, that takes.
Okay, let me discuss every time 10 seconds, that's, I'm afraid. Give me, ah. So, I take you to the, to, to the Y factory, uh, that's, yeah, some of you know it, how it is in, in Delft, and how we try to make models, uh, books, discussions, like you are doing. We are, we are brothers and sisters, so that's, uh, don't worry about that. But we concentrate a little bit, say, on, on, on thinking about the future, eh, on, on three levels, with model cities, one million abstract cities, one parameter, and hop a K, the, the city changes having it applied on different sectors and bringing it into one, say, software, the, the Space Fighter. That has been leading already to some books, which I'm not going to touch, but I want to take you to this for a special reason of tonight. Absolute Leisure is my answer, and our answer to Costa Iberica a while ago, and where we tried to paint the beauty and insane insanity of uh, Spain and Portugal in, in that way. But now, 10 years later, 12 years later, Actually, the world has become much more insane. Leisure is everywhere. It is like, uh, um, yeah, and cultivated. That is, is almost the aim of mankind these days. So we made this leisure at ABC. Where can we find leisure? I mean, it's in the in the airport. Everywhere is leisure. I cannot go through the bottles of whiskey uh, in any place. And which allotments are more popular than ever on our roofs and next to, to each side. So how many are there, in a way? The, recently, we produced more balconies than ever done in the, in, the, in the history. There's no building without balconies as such, which has a kind of giant repertoire of, uh, of elements as such. We love barbecues enormously. We and only calculate the amount of time, money, and uh, space we spend to barbecues and to smoke is already leading to a special economy. The bed, my God, did you ever look at the technology of our beds these days? And how much money we spent on the mattresses and all the equipment that surround us to, to, to give us comfort? Or the bike system, I mean, you all have them also. We love it after Copenhagen and Amsterdam. Now Barcelona is taking over, but it should be like with all the kind of gears and all the kind of, say, automation in it. There's a huge, I mean, the Starbucks syndrome is already leading to a gigantic, say, cultivation of that. And I am also guilty to that. I, and I was part of that generation that somehow has a, a, a one thing to do that. And the car turns somehow more into, with all its cruising options, more and more to, to a leisure, uh, uh, and then the city centers, of course. And, I mean, you don't want to go anymore to the Ramblas or to the city center because you're dredged in, or to, to, the, to Amsterdam at the moment or to the desktop in itself already how the technology that we are dealing with it becomes like almost like a leisure device to make us comfortable to let us work work uh, harder and tougher but and even the, the favelas become chic these days eh? based of course with with uh, uh say the, our think tank over there <laughs> our brothers but they, it, it becomes actually quite cool uh, more or less and to do that and then the gardens, I don't go into that yet, or the gyms culture, or the Havianas, the, the, which are uh, everywhere and everyone has them, or the hairdressers, how many beards are we since, since a couple of years producing and how do we treat them with that? How do you, the, of course, the icons that some of us made, the, the Jamie effect is amazing for our, for our kitchen. The libraries are basically uh, like a domain to hang out and to spend time and money. Of course, we have incredible living rooms these days everywhere. We have observation decks, et cetera. So there are offices when we are building on to, to, to work with that, to make it leisure-like. And yes, our, our outside rooms become like living rooms more and more, especially because of the client. And even the pet industry has, an, 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 I never expected that, that some of the researchers found out how much we dedicate to the pets and even to the yoga classes or the pilot swim. Rooftops are, uh, of course, uh, a Valhalla for investments. Showers are incredibly beautiful. The smartphones become more, and spectacles, of course, are part of our operation to do it on a nano. And yes, that continues with the tents, the trains, with the universities that are guilty on that. And that leads actually to a giant world of leisure. More than, more space already dedicated to it than Costa Iberica ever imagined. There is a more costs, more money spent on it. 25% of our economy is dedicated to, 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 to a leisure economy. So after the digital economy, we go into the leisure economy. What is that for future? Is that threatening or is that nice? And how much time we spend on it? Yes, exactly. 16 hours a day we spend on leisure. We for, the formula, the biological formula, 
much different way than say the 19th century that did that in that way. And then it takes all this time in it and then we are at the moment the leisure is everywhere and you can start to imagine if this leisure society in the end works, that we still work in that way, how do we work, where do we work, where is that, and, and this is then, so we try to paint that in a kind of, say, suggestions, how will our environments look like if we are becoming more leisure-like, it becomes an endless resort, we love this kind of, Barcelona like that, then you would have another kind of, say, Junes, that would, uh, uh, or when we love uh, this Mies van der Rohe uh, environment, and we would love that in our cities, then we have this kind of cities that are emerging, or yes, this is my favorite. Of course, I want to have a balcony in the future uh, like that. And if I do that for you all, then we have this gorgeous like, housing at that moment, massively over there. And then if we start to imagine how we still can grow, if we all become middle class, then absolute leisure is even much more absolute in, in the Niva future, is what this book wants to say. So, what did I paint here? Wasn't I uh, supposed to talk about robotics? And I paint actually the, the counterpart of uh, as such, you could say. So it is as if these things go together, you could, you could wonder as such. Uh, here it is. So wh what are the relationships then in that way? What, what is, uh, when I can take you to the technological part that is like surrounding it, and I was suggesting that already in many of the, uh, the elements of that book, and I look to the timeline that we did the last time with you a little bit, and that we now explore further what already is happening up to 2012 in all these events that, that, that are exploring all the technological elements, the sensors, the, 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 the touch screens, the, the data that are surrounding it that makes us more possible in that way, then we are going to, like, what is the next step on that? What technologies will hold for us in the future? And what will extend? And what kind of next step can I paint on that element? So what can we do in that way? And I take you then to the next part. No, oh, this was too short, this PowerPoint. Uh, I think I could do it. And that I take you for a moment to, uh, to some exercises where already this is kind of, uh, kind of happening as such, uh, that we, uh, oh, where is, there it is. That um, uh, I'm aware that we, we are using it more and more in our environment. And I give you two examples. I did that last time on this case to make a bridge of the last time. I take you for a moment to Oslo uh, on this fjord where we built this, uh, uh, this strip of land where here on the fjord next to the opera where they wanted to have these uh, blocks where we said don't do that blocks but slice them in pieces so that every slice has a relationship with the station and with the fjord. And then, start, and then the game started where what to do then? Because if you then want to something that's very different uh, from each other where everyone wants to use its individualism, then I needed software to do it. I needed to work with technology to, to get that complexity under, uh, uh, under it. So we made these rules, I'm not going into that, and to with a catalog, analyzing the relationship between every building. So if you have a neighbor which is a full wall, then he blocks your view and your, your sun. So that would mean that he has to pay for my, uh, my lower density in the pay. That has led to a kind of combination or kind of knowledge to, to make a software where we could, with the different parameters, we could make the block, test it at that moment in its situation, and then say, calculate basically the ground price uh, in its all a full equation. And in time, in a short time, we had to do it more or less in uh, one a year and a half, we could make this kind of composition that is now built next to the station. So you walk there, you have these different say, slices of streets with a view and the buildings that have these addresses with it uh, on, on, uh, on the bay. Of, and that leads now to this barcode how people like at the moment and becomes the, became the en envelope uh, or the emblem of uh, Norway. So I take you further because I think our building needed to survive in that, the bank. And that was built at a certain moment that say there was a kind of drop in, in, the, in the love for banks. So you know that moment still, 2008 and 9, where uh, we treated our bankers as gangsters. We advised them to, to, play, to make suicide. And then this N National Bank of Norway wanted to find a way out. So the initial step is to make three streets in between so that you could control and could invite people. And that is then say, made in this kind of way. The second element, say, for instance, the main building, to work on, a, when this is the envelope, to say we want to work in cockpit system, 
that means like that I'm always working with someone next to it and that changes in next week or the next day in that way. So if you have this cockpit everywhere, then I can play also in a scenography a negotiation and I come back to that later because it became a model at the Y factory later to, to talk about negotiation for views, for arcades and passages, for light and uh, ecology in that way, for special programs, for I internal stairs and external stairs for the smokers that need to route like this and outside. Then this is the facade uh, where all the routes are painted. And I walk, every floor becomes their kind of product of, uh, of these transactions that we made. And every floor is different. I know where I am in this building because nothing is similar as such. And then just put on another button and on your cut machine and brrr, building is ready, is what we basically done. It, does it have a shape? It, uh, uh, yeah, somehow. It is like a rock where I can go to. I can see people walking over this kind of track for the smokers. I can go further, go through the passage, see that everyone has two windows basically, go further, get, go into the building and start this walk over the glass pixels that leads to, say, passages where I can see people uh, working on it, and uh, not only them, but also the neighbors. Or the, and then when I work there, I can see outside, but I can see also to, to that route, and I continue further uh, with it. I look even to the most delicate parts of the banks in a specific way, exploring the levels of security uh, between the individual and the collective, and end, in the end, up with this kind of collective area and these views with the ultimate pixel that gives you this AK kind of address on the fjord is what it, and then of course they like it somehow they use it at the moment as the background of the news they got some awards they are proud on it and it's also again a picture point somehow why picture points are important somehow not to, to score but somehow to touch in that way and that is an art on itself that I would like to advocate so again, the tool of the computer in the, in, in the design world was ha helping to, um, uh, to, to make this project, uh, say, doable as such. I'll give you another example that I showed last time, because I showed it also because it's now under construction last time. So, I, okay, let me, let me then show it. So how to, what does it work with that? There it is. Uh, cup of tea. Almere Oosterwald. I'm not talk, talking about the whole story about Almere. I did that last year, but one spe specific piece. And I mean, Almere is an ugly city, but it's designed as a combination of lower class housing and uh, nature as such. In the eastern part, that looks a little bit like Russia in that way, we are asked to make uh, 20,000 housing units. Which is at the moment, yeah, in the Netherlands is quite booming, so whoop, that uh, can be done. But do it in a combination uh, but with the agriculture. Now agriculture, then extra housing. We do it that everyone shares the, the piece of the cake in that way. And uh, that means when you build something, you have to do also on the intensification of agriculture. You can, that is monitored by software. In order, again, with the knowledge of Oslo, I can say how much does it cost. And you can do it on yourself. You can do it with more people. You could do it with a small group or with a bigger group, and the software calculates it. And then, of course, you get buildings that are surrounded always with agriculture. We can say at that moment that you have to solve your own stuff. You have to solve your own roads, always to give passage for the next neighbor. You have to solve your own water system. You have to solve your own energy system, and which is impossible in the Netherlands because the state has to provide you with electricity. But in this case, with this 4,000 hectares, we could exclude it for Dutch law. So to stimulate a bit the technology on a kind of local level as such, and then you can make this. And you can do it, of course, in a super free way. You can do what you want. It's free land. As long as you don't harm your neighbor and you do it correctly uh, with, uh, on yourself. And then we start to dream that this is the situation, that the first, say, Catholic uh, group would be coming there, that say, the next Barba Papa group comes in, that there is the, on the back side, you have to go to another one, and you get an urbanism, which is not like a grid. I mean, yeah, that's Barcelona. We don't make grids anymore. So there is like an idea to have a kind of surprising urbanism as such that grows then over time like this. And with images like this, how you can start and how the next one goes around it, to turn it into such a kind of, say, urban plan. So what is next? Hmm. One year. Eh? This is what is happening at the moment. How many initiatives are there? And now you can see what happens in, in time uh, over the plots that people are selecting and adding to it. 
maybe not in the most liberal way that I would like to dream about, but I'm also already insanely happy, happy with what all these kind of uh, products. With these are the people that, that are participating in this software. Groups like that uh, are done. Talks like that are organized in that way. Another group that comes in and hear how they com make this kind of combination of farming and housing. In the, how they use, let's say, there's other kind of techniques for doing that. You see it happening. Other kind of water systems are applying. Different plantations are suggested. But people are coming again. There are new people coming, new constructions coming up. So this is what happened in the last year. And somehow I'm, I'm excited about that. I see here a kind of cityscape emerging, which I couldn't paint before. With this kind of mode that we are in, that we are all like middle class, that we are all have knowledge, that we are all intelligent and intellectual, and that somehow we want to contribute with our own stubbornness into a kind of responsible way. And what is happening uh, the coming, say, months is this, say, collective is coming in, this kind of group, also a beautiful one, and this is also fantastic. I mean, it's a bit ugly, but it's fine. I, it's not about taste. It is about, say, how these juxtapositions are going to work. And that means that also here, again, I needed quite a lot of technology to make, say, this kind of social um, embeddedness, uh, say, thinkable. So now, now let me then go further to kind of other processes that um, I could imagine uh, as such. Where is it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Another exercise about how technology is getting into our uh, research systems as such. Oh, this is wrong. Sorry. I take you to um, our porosity exercise because that was an answer learned, a lesson learned from Oslo. And it was about, say, this kind of uh, stupidity that we built, huh? towers that are introvert, that are uh, the autistic as such, has no uh, relationship with uh, anybody, and uh, that architects are simply making them for what sake, for money, I guess. So there was this beautiful moment that one student said, I have this tower, but uh, the best step is this. So we called Lego and we got millions of, of stones to uh, uh, that be used as a base for, say, certain kind of fantasies, where I could imagine this film doesn't work, uh, how uh, from nothing I can make the insanest amount of balconies, say from, uh, again, nothing I can make to a kind of collective space in the ball series, how I can make this kind of randomizer, how I can turn into this deviator, so every series somehow ends up with a kind of complete insanity as such, chosen by every student in that way and then placed on this kind of say map uh, here you can see that city that's more beautiful than the army of xian and that i mean if manhattan would be built like that if the yeah, ensanche would be built like that as, as i will come back to that by the way later with the block maker then i can see how cities there here's the practice there's a tower that is like wow there i have my collective space as such or here's the ball series from nothing to a kind of collective space and that flattens out at a certain moment. Or here, how, what you can do with the balcony sequence, the from nothing to a maximum, that becomes this kind of insane coral structures. Or how villages can be grouped in a tower. Or how a tower that uses basically every volume to become like a, a step top that I have to bend, bend back, that it becomes one of the most politest, say, elements in, in the planet. If that would have been built on a World Trade Center area, then we would have a better answer than that stupid freedom tower that has been made over there. And then we can make twisters, we can make this randomizer, we can, even Frank Lloyd Wright can participate in this operation and we have a beautiful collection of all this. But what is next? Because this was like starting with it and actually post scripting. You start to understand the logic behind it, the ingredients, the different parameters, put them in order and we could understand the kind of law or a rule behind it. But what would happen if we do the inverse? So if you say, I want to make stars, stairs buildings, but they are like dominated by this kind of parameters, structurally, fire escape, um, uh, etc. And then you script them, uh, one of the most important jobs that we need to do these days as architects, then it leads to this kind of say, possible stairs. I group them uh, with the housing in that way, and then I have a tower where I want to walk up in that way, which is more beautiful than Escher in the end, and that it would be like to be celebrated. If you want to make landscapes, similar amount of, of parameters as such. That in, and if I paint these landscapes here, I need to connect them in a certain way with a certain mass, and that leads to this kind of, say, towers with grottos that kiss each other. I can walk through these grottos from the bottom to the top. I get light and, and, and air uh, going through it. It cools the tower, and it makes it social, and it becomes a basin for water systems. 
porosity works, but how to pay that, how to make that possible in the different ways is then of course the next question. So that's what we at the moment are doing. Uh, so we try to calculate every shape um, immediately how much that would cost, how much steel does it need from say a stupid tower to a more intelligent tower as such. And yes, of course, my bending experience would lead to insane costs at the moment. Ultimately, this arch is actually, as the market hall has shown, a very effective one to do, to do that. Or my polite tower, and I can see the stresses that are there, somehow I can equate with the amount of money that ca I can put in, the amount of steel, that's what the, this exercise is doing. So a simple, say, again, algorithm that somehow helps us to negotiate uh, uh, for a better, say, environment is what we do. And then I continue, of course, with a, a many students. Uh, one tower needs three students working for three weeks, day and night, to make it possible. And that counts also for this kind of city that we imagine uh, the last times, what they could deal with it. So what is next, of course? Yes, I need these guys now to, have, to apply that on Lego so that they can do that. And then I can concentrate on this, basically, on having this parameterization, this knowledge that we need to to give to the planet, and that accelerates us, that helps us to make also the next steps in that way to make that then uh, more possible. That's why I show you that story, but to, uh, to see that there's a kind of positive element, this technology that helps us further. And then, of course, we go further also to the, uh, to say the, the next step in this exercise. So I take you to some, say, elements that we are just making in the moment. So they are fresh, I could say. Uh, cancel. There it is. This is called the dancing towers. This, so this is a dream to have um, like an installation, something like that, so that you can so go uh, through it and feel towers moving when you need that they do something. So that was the base of that installation to have it on one of the biennales to do that. But what is next, of course, is to make it interactive with, with like you are doing also in that way. So here you see the, the software development on say what is needed in that, what operations are there, what reactions are and feedbacks are there on every tower. If you do this or this, what is then helping in, in what is doing to the neighbors as such? What kind of distance are you uh, talking about it? And that leads then, I think to, oh, film is working. So I didn't prepare this, this film doesn't work, pity. So that's an, um, that needs to be shown in other moments than this one. Let me see. No. It's so complicated. Somehow uh, you ate my connection or ate. But it applies in that way on, on that uh, matter. So that is also a step. So it's not only the hollowing out, it's also bringing the towers to, uh, to the others. You might wonder if, um, uh, I mean, some of your uh, professors say uh, basically what, yeah, but. Uh, um, uh, there is also history in, in that way. So I wanted to dedicate this next chapter to him, to Alexi, who was like uh, talking obsessively about it in a beautiful way. You know that, uh, that we are working on this badass copy guide in that way, because there is something happening. Uh, you know, maybe that in Copenhagen, when uh, we made uh, this silo, uh, dumb, uh, the silo project where we hang basically the houses in that way to have better structure, but also better balconies and uh, a beautiful view um, and a beautiful, say, interior as such that looks like the Guggenheim uh, and place it in Copenhagen that I was like shocked nah, with this kind of image that came on my mobile um, like, a, like, like two years ago now and that said that uh, like 20 kilometers further of it, people were doing, other architects were doing the same. So that was like shamelessly done, not in countries where you would say you expect that, but in Denmark, which is, ex uh, which is of like we know Danish these days. They are a bit double. Eh? There's called kind of festen uh, rhetorica uh, are there that you can see uh, then applying in this case. So of course, what do you do with that? You call your lawyer, you send a letter, to, um, uh, you negotiate, uh, uh, say, uh, compensation act. So now we are building another building in that way in, in Copenhagen. But it was like, a, of course, it's also like an honor to, uh, to, uh, to get it done. So we thought, let's, let's go further with that. So with a, a journalist in the Netherlands, uh, who is like looking to this kind of similarities that are everywhere from who, where is Zaha? Uh, which one is it? Uh, which one not? Was it? So endlessly like showing in many series, also in our case, uh, which is MVRDV and which is Disney, is what in this case uh, saying. So you start to wonder 
what, a, uh, what is the, the price of a Pritzker price, of an or or originality as such? And you are masters in that, uh, in copycats, uh, like uh, your Swedish combination here works pretty out well. There are discussions between, say, what is happening in Rotterdam or in Oslo. Uh, in the case of when we build this in, uh, in, in Paris, then there's some, like a colleague uh, that is building this in uh, Singapore, or when this tower is under production in Milano, then some other one did it in uh, Bangkok. Or when uh, Jacques and, and, and Pierre make this, then with our vertical village, I respond to that. But this is something. I try to, from the object, it becomes urbanism. Is what is, so you can innovate. I'm not saying that it's bad to evaluate in that way, to use the base of it. I mean, I find this hilarious, of course, that, that in the Aboriginal Museum, they use that copy, but only black. I find it quite courageous to do it uh, that, uh, in that, on, that, on that level. And there were others that didn't care about copying, of course. They, lo they did it like without any ideas. This is, this is Istanbul. I mean, millions of the same are there in one uh, go. And some develop quite smart ways of dealing with uh, uh, that co element. You can respond to it in an artist artistic way at a certain moment. I think that our Skyndall building is a little bit about that. So what is next? I tried to, in the AA, uh, to work um, already with this kind of déjà vu, uh, showing that there is uh, more people that love holes, empty hearts, but they do it in a different ways, which is fine. And you can judge now which one works in that way. Okay, in how, how it works. I'm doubting about that guy, that, because that doesn't give that much onto that hole in, in, in that way. And even CCTV is a problematic sometimes because of its use. Of, of the center of heart. There are many pixelators these days, and especially with our computer knowledge, is, is actually quite a tool. So what to, you know, how to deal with that, in a way, with, with this kind of new SIAM that we are, we are facing? I mean, we share more than you think. So I always think about like this text, uh, that, that uh, if you have a text and you, do, uh, you apply this technique to it, uh, this, and th then you can see who made the changes in that way, which is very beautiful. And this was a text for the Grand Paris, and, and you see the different authors that are participating. Say, so maybe something this guide is about. It starts, of course, with the biggest disclaimer. Yeah, that's what we have to do always. And we made, especially, the, a nice disclaimer. And then, of course, we went through different articles on the issue of copying, ethics, the world of patents. Uh, we went through strategies. Speed, yeah, like in China, it, speed helps. We made a, a library of evolutions. We learned from China, and so on. And we worked with El Croquis. And we were allowed to make their new fake El Croquis in that way. El Croquet is what we call. We used the strategies and tools, thanks to them. And we worked with uh, Sechijima on a tower to make it more beautiful, as such, or to make this trans gender uh, with others as such. This is also a beauty. Or here, Herzog and Dumeron become more urbanistic in the end and more helpful to Africa in that way. Or of course, this would be the best, say, uh, Sarine, which we could imagine. And that would be, uh, 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 it was part of the competition uh, that we did with the students and we were kicked out rapidly in that way. This was a complete insult. Americans don't have humor, as we all know these days. So we continue with more chapters, but what is next is the generator that comes out of that. So that's basically dealing with, say, origin and, and evolution. That is going through, and um, say, all its diversity. It is copying, use the genetics behind it. So how to do that in, in that way? It uh, uses, say, um, uh, or the icons, um, but it uses also, say, the modeling techniques that we are all having on our computers. We are already, we have our new, say, lingua franca, as our new Esperanto is rhino in that way. And that makes, us all, that makes our shapes quite specific as such. So if you look what you can do with this toolbox as such, and then you start to imagine the starting points as such, then you can reveal, say, uh, next steps in that. You can continue in generic lines, uh, genetic lines to that, coding them and, and having them, uh, them scripted uh, in, in this kind of manner that leads to this kind of, say, genetic directions. I mean, a DNA uh, composition are, say, painted in this uh, series of excursions leading to this giant, uh, say, maps as such that are three-dimensional in the ultimate, say, matrix as such. 
so that in the way, in the end, the tower excursion that we made with, with Lego is cute, but now how? Now we find a way, a generator, where you can say, I want to deviate like that in that way, and then ultimately, and with a text that I'm not going to show, you uh, get a kind of statement as such, and that I, uh, somehow this generator is, a, uh, is part of, say, our enterprise efforts. So yes, the, our past is in, don't worry that we, we can do that. Then I go back to the, the more recent say, exercises. I'm afraid that they, i try this one. Blah. This is embarrassing, sorry. Grant access. Maybe it works, let me try. Sounds strange, first time in a lecture that it does that. And to a recent project that we, uh, we call the Ego City or the Wego City, uh, um, because it's designed and this is the starting point of 17 egos as architects. Architecture students are obsessed with, with they want to be unique, of course, and uh, oh, horrible. So they have also 17 weird clients in that way. And uh, so they designed for them what is the good house for this uh, weird client. Let's say Justin Bieber, what does he need? So what is, then, what is the lazy man needing? So they analyzed his character and negotiated with him and came up with a kind of just a dormitory with a bowling alley. He can sit and he can bow. That was, but you can do it also for this kind of immaterial character or this kind of metal guy or this, this protester or this mediative uh, director, this driver or this bibliomaniac, etc. There are different say, characterizations. Characterizations are not bad. Uh, there are people that want to be neutral, but that I, I'm not sure about it. So that was what when, when you put them in suburbia, who cares? That's not, not in, I mean, if you put them, say, in Barcelona, then or in a city, then you, wow, now it becomes interesting, because we spend your bowling alley in that way. And so what we try to do with different games, um, um, how we can negotiate uh, from that. So here you see how it's working and how people are working on it. But there are different kind of games. I, for the moment, I only show the blind one because I love that one, because then I don't know what the others are doing. So here you see the scripting of it, how it's in our software, this, the, 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 the logic behind it. You start to work, there are ghosts that are attacking you and you have to defend them and lead gradually to this kind of sequence. So what is next? It's for infrastructure follows it. So with that composition, lines are always like reserving access in between the gaps of you that are fighting with your neighbor in that way is what it wants to say. And what is then next? Well, actually, it's quite okay if you do the uh, evaluation as such. Uh, so only my client was not so happy in that way. So the satisfaction per percentage has been made by this kind of so software in that way to understand it a little bit. And yes, some of them we're quite satisfied, if you can see it here, especially this guy, somehow was very smart to beat, uh, say, uh, some of them, especially this lazy guy was, in the end, impossible to, for his, uh, say, evaluation as such. So you see a beautiful, say, tool, where, but, we are, but it's already better, the blind game, than the strategic one or the trading games that we also developed, and that was shown results in this kind of, this is what was fantastic, and after 20 years, of the Berlin voids that we tried to make when I was young, that we somehow we can do that everywhere in a kind of direct way, in a kind of way that it stimulates and uh, this kind of action. And, and, and also not only yourself, because I'm intrigued by that guy that's penetrating my house. So somehow there's something funny in that place over there. I want to go there. So ego goes to we go. Indirectly, it becomes like Herzberger and, uh, and Van Eyck at that moment. So what is the next? Now we are working on, this, on that software more, how the different, say, users and the different, say, um, demands are, as a combined to, with a circular fight. It's also how to, how to make that fight. So if you make a circle, and it's like therapy, yeah? So, and, but then there are different relationships, and that relationship you are going to trade off, and that leads ultimately to compositions that could be fitted in and negotiated as the see from that, say, uh, say, that circular fight is one model to think about it. And then, of course, we are thinking about next steps to make it more possible. I'm happy that we are now working on the, this Every Star Hotel. And uh, if this film works, then yeah, this is it. So, so here you see one of the, of the designs uh, made with sticks as such. Does it work? So there's a guest coming. He gets a room. 
six point out. Checks in there and it gets that room. So with the sticks, we, we can freeze certain situations um, uh, with the simple technique as such. So you can do it quite over time. They are very, quite fast in that way. So that makes it considerable that we can have this kind of, yeah, what is it, zero star or multi-star hotel from very luxurious to, uh, to, almost, uh, uh, to, to almost nothing. So every space is unique. Every space is driven by our apps. And uh, this is a, one of the sticks that are developed out. And now this slide with the extra power that comes from above. Don't worry with the wheels. So we try to do it in a kind of, say, a low-tech manner. The beams are hollow, so they're cartridges for all kinds of, say, program that can be in it and that you can help them to service your uh, apartment. They, they're made out of three sticks so that we have walls, mid, mid walls, and uh, on, on either end so that we can pass by on a, this is a possible corridor system that we could, uh, could apply. Quite some sticks. In that way, it's not ecological. A lot of wood for this test. So now it's like testing how much we can do, how, how fast it goes per hour. So here, the room is in preparation for Finn, who is coming, optimizing his uh, desires, negotiating with the neighbor, pushing him back. So he has checked in. I love that part, because here the, the beam split. You can go in here. And go further, and you see Finn moving to it. So it continues this story. I'm not going to show everything in that way. We do it in different techniques in that way to try and to see what is the best and uh, try to build two of them, one in Eindhoven in the design week and one in Indaba next time in South Africa and, uh, 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 and, and to see how that then works. So from a theoretical point, you come in the end to, to, a, to also an application and different than yours so that you have here in your installations here. So I know I'm not going to compete with you because I want to do uh, like a corner of that program. You have to think further after this kind of we go. So here, and and in, then in, in I take you to the, to Barba very rapidly because you, you have seen it. But is to to think what is the so let me look at the timeline again. And we had this kind of assumption, and we ended somehow with more like nano uh, component. Nano becomes of course incredibly important. Uh, the, the the nano industry in the Netherlands is fantastic. The east of the U.S. works pretty good on it. So I could imagine that like Barba Papa the comic that I can work with chemi chemical people to make, uh, uh, to, to make with them with, uh, uh, like, a, like a kind of rubber that freezes and that defreezes as such. So we call that Barba Papa. And the, the, so you see what the molecules can do. Eh? You have already this hearts, CHO combinations with other components in it, some electricity and blah, blah, blah is going to do that. So that means that they can move these molecules all together and that I can do all those desires that I had before. Yes, I could make uh, in that moment, uh, like this was an initial dream, to have basins for water at any place that I want uh, to, uh, to have it. Or I can activate uh, the electronics part by saying, let's have a kind of uh, chaise along wherever I want it, and my neighbor has a beautiful bump in his, uh, et cetera. So we could dream about that. It makes partly sense. Because if I analyze the amount of space that we don't use, the, the amount of cubic meters, I mean, for instance, here, I'm already watching television, my wife comes home, and we share that moment, then we don't need that other rooms. I can put them only in a storage say, situation, or we, we go to bed, the rest can go also away. Then we walk further out in the morning, have breakfast for initially, and the other rooms can shrink, and then I walk to the office together. House can, go and can be gone, only 10% I need. For the, for the house. So if that continues, also for the office that grows during the day and, and in the evening, uh, and then it shrinks again. And if I do that also with the neighbors as such that are compulsory to that, then it becomes like a plasma where any say redundancy, this is ecological also in that way. And yes, of course, the lift is fantastic in that plasma because it goes like down and, it, and the material dampens. It's like the, the bath in Ikea and, and you put your kid in it and the other kids don't, don't follow it when you throw him in. So, and that is what the dream was about. So yes, there's more than 60% of waste of space on the planet in that way. Yes, we can invite people to come. There's no problem with one million people in Germany at that moment and uh, hopefully also in Spain. So what was next? I think the questionnaires film 
when we worked with Axel Nobel uh, on this uh, combination, the, and they asked us, what, what, what can I apply it for? Now, maybe for a Barba Papa house or a Barba Papa piece of furniture. Yeah, but how much should it then do? So we, the students made this kind of analysis of like how much space do I need from second to second. So when I sleep, not so much. When I wake up, oh, gradually I need to have some more space uh, to open up my eyes. Then the material pushes you up and you start to walk like in Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times as such. And then you start to walk. How much space do I need before me? With what kind of speed? How fast do I go through it in a way? And, how, and when do, don't I need the space on the back of me anymore? So this sequence of like, from the morning to the evening of this film, describes what I ask to the material. What is the memory of the material? What is, say, the, the relationship of movement of my hands to, uh, to, say, to opening when I want a window? And, and I still remember when I was, uh, when I was 20 something and that, I, that, that I, Herman Herzberger said, I want to open a window like this. And, and that, uh, so now finally we can make it for him. He has his party next week when he becomes 85. And I give him, say, the script for that window so that he can uh, then give it to his, uh, his kids to, to make the next step. So the film continues. Um, but then you have to work further on it. I I'm still love this kind of research of um, some people in, in, our, uh, in the studio to, to use Muybridge basically to calculate how much space is behind you when it fades out, to mirror that also to the front in that way with any movement. To, uh, to understand it, to then to combine it, say, in this kind of see, software that makes this ghost in time uh, um, uh, to make it visible as such, in any movement as such, to try to discuss how it works together in action, virtually, but also with action, how far do you do that, with this kind of touching act. So gradually I can have this kind of interactive component as such, and then I can apply it. Like these students are doing it now with uh, this uh, magic carpet where in order to understand the software that needs to activate that CHO component, we start with felt and chicken wire in between and uh, the chicken wire is a bit intelligent chicken wire. But so when activating this carpet at a certain moment and turning it into a table, then the, it should calculate how stiff that should be in order to have it done or to make a seat with that with chicken wire. A simple model now adopted by Vitra to bring it one step further. And you can continue then also with the walls in this case. Or we can decide to activate it. Here, uh, say, uh, like, how can you activate that material there with your apps, of course. But I love these napkins uh, in that way. And a small test what touching can do, like you probably do also in your case. So you have uh, one napkin on the table, you put your hand on it, and the other napkin says hello in that way. So that you can script at the, at the moment. But also I can do it, say, in a talking manner, uh, uh, like this one, oh, sorry. Like this one is doing. Give me a second. A done for a Swedish lady, has a castle in next to, um, to uh, Stockholm paid it to paint her house basically with this kind of panels. So Adrian is here, you can talk uh, with him about it. These are the specs that are done for these panels. I, th I still love it, it's very low tech in that way. You can simply buy it around the corner here. And, uh, but if you have them, these panels, and you pass by uh, in this case, and you say, wow, the freezing is already nice. The guy loves it. And then you start to talk to it in that way, then the panel reacts. Of course, what is the scripting of the, of, of the reaction? If you start to shout, it becomes angry at that moment. Also, the panel become, uh, became angry in that way. So this is an intriguing model of how, let's say, what to do that. And it's already very complex, but if you make the simple exercises, it already helps as such what that could be. So that is kind of, say, already was an op eye opener, but how to continue with that, say, uh, enterprise? So, I make a side tour for a minute. Don't worry, I'm ready in the, like 10 minutes. But it's um, um, what, that, what that could be. So here it is. Where it... Oh, my hotel <laughs> is appearing. Um, so I take you for a moment also like uh, uh, to the north for a moment. Why to be inspired? It's a, we call it the luxury of the north project. And um, uh, it was a, a fantastic moment to go there with a group of designers, uh, paid by Drove Design and by, by the UN, to explore what are the qualities that we can find. And uh, they, these give a kind of strange observation that some of the purity you find, you want to put into, into our cities that are now dominated by density. 
that are loud and dark and crowded, and maybe we can escape from that in certain ways. So, for instance, the infinity of the uh, you know the fact that, that day and night, there is light in, uh, in, the, in, in the area, and maybe it's a reflection. Say, if there is not only one sun, but if there are millions of suns to, to do that. Love is also a little bit working on it, but this is one step further, so that take, because you can take it with you in that moment. That's a dream, and how can we do that? If you ever have such a particle, how, then this would be the world, seven billion suns, that how it's say made, out of FLP, in combination with certain kind of activators, that is what I want to do at the at Design Academy, not, of course, in architecture in Delft. It's a stupid place somehow, because you need these kind of inventions to make this sense thinkable that loves you and that follows you if you want. Another element is about, say, silence as such, which is so nice. So how to make that possible? So this is a, somehow a dream that came across when we were thinking uh, how we could make a city where the, the, the snow is recently fallen and that they become silent as such. So if we make insulating uh, particles that cluster around, say, noise as such, if you, how can you do that? Because that means with, a, with this gel, the C gel, and with certain activators that react on noise, didn't I do that in Stockholm, by the way? So to, to have that done, then it means that our trains will look like this at that moment. It dampens the south when it goes around. Or when I'm waking up on the morning and I look to, my, to the city below, then I'm living above the sky almost, because there the, the, these clouds are, are happening. Or when there's more noise at a certain moment, and then maybe I can activate in that way openers uh, uh, with a certain kind of counter sound. Or an next device, eh? because at the North Pole there is no danger. Ah, bear, but there is, there is uh, no ratings or no health and safety uh, requirements as such. So what would happen how, if we would skip that also in our cities? That I can walk around like this. No railing and no, 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 no those grills that I could feel free, and the trains just pass by with any problem as such. And how can that done? Can I do to make this protection in another way? Can I activate my own safety field as such? Maybe with a certain kind of suit and your electronic devices, I could replace then the defense that reacts on the environment. Are we going to trust in that? In this? Wow, that would be cool. That I would simply have be free to go around with that kind of device. So yes, the students that did that, are now making for the museum, for the Boymans, like a device that you can put this kind of statues of Michelangelo that are coming there to surround it simply with that device so that you cannot touch it in that way. So it is doable if we uh, make that. So then, of course, this infinity of the forest we would like to do. So these students, uh, say, investigated how we can mirror in any ways and activate mirrors everywhere so that we sh and shapes that we can have this kind of environments where light goes further, where everything is dredged in this endless mirror. Then I dream about, say, a comic book or a science fiction book of, of Schuytema and Peters from Belgium of like 20 years ago that finally is made. And of course, we should live in infinity, no? I, don't you dream to sit like that in that way? And, and everywhere where it's possible, and let's say my son would play in this kind of environment. Is that doable? Eh? That cities that are dense are transparent? that say, this is my house, and of course, the intimate parts of my family are properly covered, don't worry, and with mirrors, so that it continues and that it becomes even more direct. But also the neighbors are doing that. Then infinity would go into our environment. So here are the devices that we need to do that and to make it possible. And then I continue, of course, with, the, with my lounge, with my street, with my neighbor, and then I have like this kind of lines in it. I would have dreamed that the ensanche would be made out of glass as such. And then we would have a kind of fantastic city. So what is next? Well, you know the street. We try to do this test now with Chanel to have this kind of ent enterprise now happening in, uh, in Amsterdam as a first test. And working now in Hong Kong with the transparent office is the next step. So you need these steps to make it, uh, to make it yeah. And yes, it's a bit dreamy. People want to touch it if it's, if it's real, is what this building is saying. So you have to start somewhere with his dreams. So funnily, this inspired a lot. This, I didn't expect that, that somehow we could learn from our extreme the societies. But it touches also, and I'm at the last chapter um, of my talk, uh, is that it touches also a next step after nano, 
it goes into the world of gels, it goes into the world of air as such, where uh, in the world of fog, that means that from say unorganic, we maybe go to organic chemistry at the moment, when they kiss each other, when they love each other, as we explored this week here, then we might have a momentum um, that is the next after the nano, then bio comes in. And then Baba Papa becomes Baba Mama in that moment. And that we somehow become also uh, uh, more integrated as such, with lovable projects, with lovable products as such, that all contribute to that new chemistry that we could... Uh, so how to do that? That's my question. I hope so for the next workshop next year. That cannot be solved by this group now. We paint it, uh, uh, I think, uh, in the coming weeks. I hope to show it, uh, what you are doing in uh, this week, not only here, but also later in Eindhoven at the Design Week, uh, to dream about, say, this kind of a comic book that you are making, and a, maybe a long mural that goes through the city to show this transformation of that city. And then I, can, it, then I think about splendidity, about like a speculations that when this, say, robotic city starts to have gradually like things that I didn't know, these are images of the last year, how this splendidness was like explored and how they are now somehow ex extended in the exercise that we do here this week and turn into a sequence as such. This kind of cannot do that in this case of the splendid say, images. But here you see also the clouds emerging that transport us from city to city in that way or the new kind of devices that are there that are coming up when needed and go away when needed and that have different shapes and different conglomerates. So, and what is then next? I would say, do we have the balls to do it? And this is maybe what I would like to do at, uh, in Davos uh, soon, to paint these worlds that are made on this base. Is it possible to have Barba Papa conquering the world? Is it doable to make a planet which is in this new biology that you're dreaming of? Is it done? Do we change then our planet from a blue planet into a green planet when I come from the moon? as such, or do I do other kind of examples with this planet? Every strategy I can imagine an other kind of planet that deals with that, with that kind of technology, with that kind of behavior, and that kind of beauties. And then, of course, I dream that in the entrance hall of Davos, see, when Merkel is trying to come in and, and then when, and, and, and goes between the balls and try to find out which one would, uh, uh, she would like, and that between the balls, of course, we lose Trump on his, his exercise when he tries to go through it, that would be, I think, a fantastic, say, enterprise to somehow summarize this kind of dream. And what is then next? Uh, somehow, I work on a kind of robotic city that is as a counterbalance to this kind of uh, absolute leisure. And that was about dreams and frightening nightmares sometimes, because who wants to live in this kind of plasma, but hopefully try to think about a nightmare that becomes a dream. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so thank you very much, Winnie, um, and thank you for finishing with this high point, so this dream. Um, I'd like to invite anyone who might have any questions to raise their hand. No? Yes? Thank you very much for this incredibly interesting lecture. Um, however, I have to say that I'm a bit divided because I think I didn't understand one part. I got a bit confused when it comes to individualism, because I felt that at some points uh, you were really nurturing the individualism through your projects, and then at some other points there was a sort of a satire about individualism, so we go. So this duality was created during the lecture and was quite interesting, but at the end I think you closed it off with, the question was created right there, uh, is individualism the nightmare or the dream? And I guess, how does that, to be honest, my real question is, what came before? Again, another chicken and egg uh, question that you are raised. Another, uh, there's, a, there's a potential again for a lecture in this kind of duality that are there. Because there's a lot to say about individualism. It can be greedy, it can be horrible, it can be frightening for, for neighbors. 
and it can be wonderful because you, can, you are different than you are. So I, and I love difference in that way. I love biodiversity in that way. So ec ec extending somehow this richness of this 9 billion, 20 billion people, diversity of it would be wonderful to do it and to explore that with you. And we all want to be a little bit of unique. This uniqueness is encouraged, but also with a certain kind of egalitarianism. Because if you have all have access to education, then it's fine. Or if you have all, all are kind of half riches, then that's, then that's maybe nice in that way. So there's, there's immediately a duality between individualism and collectivism in that way. So, I, and I'm aware that this lecture doesn't give that answer. I mean, I think that Osterwald somehow puts a finger on that relationship. And I do that, say, we go city, does that, is that, say, satirical or, or the, the, no, 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 if, if you can do that, then still, you know, your neighbor is next to you and you have to negotiate. Is that a good negotiation process? That's the question. Are you going to fight? Yes or not? Or are you civic enough to, uh, to deal with that? So the, oh, there's a lot of work to do still to make that balance. I'm, uh, that's very fair. And I love democracy, eh? I'm, 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 I love majorities in that way. And uh, so I'm also still dedicated to that. But I also love transparency, you know, to see what are the powers behind that democracy in that way. And, uh, what are the, the, the transparency in, in development money of, of investors in that way, or what it can give to, uh, to that kind of collective agenda as such. So there is, it has quite some, some, some attributes or some elements that are connected to that in order to make that function. So that's maybe the deeper part of your question in that way. And that, uh, but that's too early for tonight. That deserves its own status as such. Uh, and, uh, to do that. So I agree with you. That is um, how to explore that, that biodiversity that makes sense is what, uh, in short, to, uh, to see that. Does that give an, a direction for your thoughts? Any other thoughts on this? Or are you also starving <laughs> and need a beer? Questions help, eh? honestly. I mean, for me personally also, because it's not only giving. So like, I'm happy that we had a workshop so that we already had a discussion. Well, I would be here for nothing. But it's, so if there's any uh, comments on it, maybe you can yell. Eh? If you think this is horrible, please tell me. That's uh, <laughs> your safety there. No, I, so I, 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 if it silence means yes, sir, that you know that, that means that you are agreeing to it. So thank you very much for your agreement on that. And I see you at the bar. Then I'll hope to see you soon. <laughs> the at the back.